Time to call the hogs. We got uh, Ty Hudson on the line from Pig Trail Network to break down Arkansas recruiting for the month of June. Ty, how are we doing today? Hey, yo, Mark. How you doing, man? Doing well. Doing well. Good to see you. Always a good conversation. Oh, yeah. Look forward to this one, too. All right, everyone. Uh, please like the video. Share the videos out on social media. My thought is if you enjoy the content, others will as well. So help us build the uh, channel by sharing the link out there, letting people know that we're here talking SEC football every day. All right, Ty, you got a strong side defensive end in the fold from Nico DeValier from uh, Mamel, Arkansas. And if I've uh, upset the locals by mispronouncing a, a, a hometown there, my bad. 67th rated defensive lineman in the country, according to the 247 Sports Composite, and a top five player in the state of Arkansas. Yeah, hoping uh, Arkansas gets him, lands him. He's a uh, very, I think, underestimated, you know, he's a diamond in the rough, whatever you want to call it. He's one of those guys that probably deserves a little bit more, uh, some more star power next to his name. Right now, he is a top 70 defensive lineman, according to 247's composite. Uh, he's top five player in, in the state of Arkansas. Arkansas has cleaned up really well in the state of Arkansas, uh, as to be expected. You know that's usually the case, but you know there have been years where that wasn't the case. He had two four-star offensive linemen, neither one in the same year, which is so rare to happen here. They go in opposite directions. One goes to Oklahoma, mm -hmm. the other goes to Ole Miss. Uh, but this year it's looking pretty good, and Nico's going to hopefully be a part of that. Uh, for this for this class, but yeah, he's uh, 2022 kid out of Maumelle again, six four two seventy five. I think I had heard last that he had actually gained a little bit more weight, uh, somewhere closer to maybe creeping up on three hundred pounds. I'm not sure that might be wrong information, so take that with a with a grain of salt, please. But uh, I, I I like his uh, where he's projected, you know, and and he's a kid that. I think could uh, could make a run in his first couple of years on campus at Ar at Arkansas. That is uh, to be a guy that that if he's not gonna if if he doesn't make the three deep, it's because he's in the two deep. I really think he's that kind of kind of prospect for the Razorbacks. And uh, that sixty uh, seventh ranking along the defensive line may not excite a lot of people, but as somebody told me recently, check out the offers. And when you look at the offers. That list is impressive. He just got back from Oklahoma over the weekend yep. and just add that to the line of SEC powers and national powers on his offer sheet. Yeah, and like you and I were talking before we started recording, I'm pretty sure more than half of those are committable offers. These are these are not warm-up offers or, hey, we're going to kind of keep this kid around. As far as I know, these are, you know, when you're ready to announce, you know, we're here, and and that includes Nebraska and uh and and a couple other schools i think oklahoma's i i assume especially just coming off a visit i'm assuming that that is a committable offer that's one of the ones i'm not entirely sure but i know they're heavily interested in him but uh he is he's, he's supposed to make an announcement i believe it's uh i want to say it's the last weekend of june I, I thought it was the 26th i could be wrong i'm sure razorback fan will correct me in the comments later as i would only expect them to do so because there's probably not another fan base that keeps up with recruiting like hog fans but uh they uh i feel really confident he's going to end up being a razorback the number one rated uh, player in the state he's on the open market now yeah isaiah santagna this kind of to me this came as a shock uh, i know that Everyone I've had access to in Arkansas media, every one of them have said the same thing. Arkansas did not back down. In fact, they dialed it up to, to a 10 when going after Isaiah Santegna. They really went after this kid. We know that there are current Arkansas commits that are reaching out to him and, and talking to him and creating a friendship there. I think J.J. Hollingsworth, uh, I want to say Quincy McAdoo, a couple of the, maybe maybe Joyner, a couple others that have really – I think they've if they haven't created a friendship there, they are at least trying to push him to join him to join them at Arkansas there at uh, in Fayetteville. But uh, yeah, he decommitted, and it did. It came as a little bit of a surprise to me. I I figured well, if he decommitted, well then okay, he's from Fayetteville. He's got ties obviously to the University of Arkansas with his mom and dad, and or w with his dad uh, coaching track and what have you. Um, surely he's an Arkansas lock, right? That's what. That's what I thought. So this means any minute he's going to commit to Arkansas, right? No. 
hold on, pump the brakes. It's a little bit more complicated than that. What I do know about Isaiah is he does want to be a two-sport guy. This is not a uh, a situation where you have a guy that just happens to enjoy another sport and might play one or the other or whatever. No, he wants to do track and he wants to play the game of football. And naturally, Arkansas, you would think, I mean, it's considered the college, the collegiate track capital of the country. You would think, well, then Arkansas still has to be a lock. It's not all, it's not the case. It's way more complicated than that. His parents, uh, I think they actually ran track at LSU. So LSU has been all over him. Uh, Ed Orgeron has a lot of interest in Isaiah Santagna. I've heard that Oregon is in the mix. We know what Phil Steele and Nike have done for that, for, for their um, track program. Well, all their uh, the, you know, football and basketball and track. They know that the, 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 they take their facility serious up there. USC is also rumored to be in the picture because, and I tell you, it's all about this track thing apparently for him. And I know track is life for anyone who's who's been involved with it. Uh, USC is in the picture because of several of the assistants on the track team there ran with his parents down at LSU or coached with them somewhere. There's some kind of connection there. So Arkansas, it's not a lock. I would probably, I don't know, a couple days ago I said Arkansas has to be my number one. I'd probably bump them down to like number two or number three, probably behind LSU. We'll see about Oregon. It might even just be too early to tell. that Anything could happen. Um, he committed to them uh, a while back to A&M, and, and so now maybe he's going to take a little bit of time, get through the summer, maybe get through football, and, and then – you know, maybe he'll change his mind or, or make up his mind, I should say, in December. But yeah, Santegna was an interesting story that's still developing. But uh, him decommitting from AM was pretty big. AM has had a lot of success in the state of Arkansas as far as grabbing their number one player in the state. And uh, Arkansas would like to put an end to that this year. And Santegna, five foot 11, 170 pound speedster wide receiver, as one would imagine, being a track kid like he is. Uh, he's uh, He's quick on film. I like him. He stands out. Could be a could be a pretty great asset wherever he ends up going.